Hi everyone, welcome to the penultimate day of Fast and Feast. Hope you're all well and been experiencing God working in your lives these last few days. Um, so today's, today's day 20 and we're going to be looking at loving your enemies and praying for those who persecute you. The, what we're going to be focusing on in particular is forgiveness. Simply because if you think about it, you can't, if you, you can't love your enemy without forgiving them first. And so we're going to be looking a bit at the story of Joseph and see if he has totally, see how he totally forgave his brothers. And um, we're going to unpack seven principles uh, from them and see, and see how, and see how they show us with whether we've actually forgiven someone or not in our lives. Um, I mean, so if I was to ask you all, um, how many of you have actually forgiven someone? I'm sure all of you would raise your hands and say yes. But if I was to show you over the next couple of minutes that you actually haven't forgiven them, would you then in the end go back and um, ask, would you then go back and, uh, and then go do it actually completely and totally forgive them? So when, when we've been hurt, it's the most natural thing to want to get revenge or to want somebody to get what is coming for them. But if we were to let them off the hook and actually pray for them, and uh, we, we start to become more Christ-like in our nature, and when I say pray for them, I don't mean just say, God, I commit them to you, but then because you're secretly hoping that God will smite them off the earth, but actually pray and pray for God to bless them and prosper them, not punish them. So, um, I mean, you may ask me why, why do we need to forgive someone? So there are plenty of reasons. So health, your own health is at stake, number one. Um, it, there's been plenty of studies showing that um, holding a grudge against someone can actually um, increase your chance of getting certain illnesses. Um, secondly, Paul talks about in Corinthians um, that forgiveness, uh, forgive so that you don't let the devil outsmart you. And so, you know, because if you have unforgiveness in your heart, you, you, give a, you open a door for the devil to come in and just wreak havoc. And um, thirdly, simply because Jesus taught it. It was one of the, it's, it's the way he lived. Um, it's the main, it's one of the main fundamentals of Christianity that we often overlook. And um, so, yeah, let's have a look at Joseph's story. Um, so for those of you who don't know much about Joseph, we're, we're going to be looking at it from Genesis 45. So what's happened until now is pretty much Joseph is, he's um, son of Jacob. He's jo Joseph is the favorite son out of 12. And uh, Joseph was special. He'd have prophetic dreams. He'd uh, he'd get um, visions where where he'd get visions of his brothers, his eleven brothers, bowing down to him. And um, his problem was that he'd actually go and tell his brothers the vision. And uh, this happens twice. And his brothers get jealous and they plot to kill him. And uh, so when they're about to kill him, a group of Ishmaelites come along, and they decide to sell Joseph to the Ishmaelites. So they rip off Joseph's coat. They dip it in blood and they lay it in front of their father, and uh, they just the brothers just tiptoe away silently, breathe a sigh of relief, and say, "Job well done." A few years pass, and there's a famine in the land. Um, Jacob sends the sons to come to Egypt to ask the prime minister for some food, but they little do they know that the prime minister is actually their brother Joseph. So 22 years later, we join them at Genesis 45, and uh, yeah, so let's have a look at verse one. Then Joseph could not control himself before all those who stood by him, and he cried, Have everyone go out from me. So there's no man with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. So this is our first point. Um, don't tell anybody what they did to you. I know, bear with me. Um, he wants to make sure, he, he does this because he wants to make sure no one in Egypt finds out what his brothers have done to him because he knew that he was loved by the Egyptians. And if the brothers... And, and if the Egyptians found out what his brothers had done to him, they would have, uh, they would have hated him. And he he actually wanted his brothers and his father to come live with him in Egypt, and so he wanted them to be loved as much as he was. I mean, there there are two two exceptions to this. So you do tell someone when for therapeutic reasons, so uh, a spiritual mentor or someone along those lines, but only one. Like you don't need to tell five, fifty, hundred, uh, just one person. And secondly, in a court of law, um, if that person is a danger to society, then it needs to be said. Um, so, I mean, the real reason we tell everyone or anyone is is because that is a way of getting even, um, even with them. It's you know we don't want anyone else to admire them 
or love them because of because of because of what they did to us because they hurt us. But um, Psalm 142 verse two says, "Pour out your complaint to the Lord," and um, yeah, so tell God and no one else really. So point number two. Um, don't let them be afraid of you. So if we're to look at verse 2, um, or, or verse 4 even, he says, um, please come closer to me. He, he doesn't want his brothers to be afraid of him. He wants his brothers to come close to him. Um, and sometimes we tend to do this, you know, we tend to hold something over people just so that um, we can make them nervous. I mean, why do we keep records? Uh, because to show that we've paid so why do you keep a record of wrong because to to say you know um, I will I will remember that and um, can you see how holding that over someone can can cause them to be afraid and, and uh, scared and but Joseph says uh, Joseph assures them don't don't be afraid come closer to me so point number three you let them you, you don't even let them feel guilty you in verse four and five he wants them to forgive himself he he says, don't be dismayed, don't be discouraged. He wants them to be able to get over what they've done. So he, he basically doesn't want them to suffer. I mean, because usually when when you forgive someone, you don't want them to feel pain. You, you don't want to see them in pain. You, um, you want to forgive regardless of what they've done. Uh, forgive them regardless of whether they, they're even aware of what they've done. Jesus on the cross, you know, he said, Father, forgive them for they, they don't know what they've done. And uh, what annoys us the most is when people have hurt us and they're not even aware or even sorry of what they've done. And, uh, and we start to confront that and things get messy and, and uh, splits start to occur. But um, it takes minimal grace to forgive someone who's sorry, but then it takes a whole lot more grace to forgive someone who's not even sorry or even aware of what they've done. Um, point number four, you let them say face. Um, verse five to eight, um, Joseph tells his brothers that it wasn't you guys that, that put me here in this situation. It was God. God brought me here. God sent me here because he, God had a plan. And if you do really look at it, Abraham, I mean, God promised Abraham that his seed would come out of Egypt. And that um, he would... Um, and so God chose Joseph. And Joseph says that to, tells his brothers that, that, you know, God brought me here for a reason. So it wasn't you. So he, he lets them save face. He almost gives them... A cover story and um, yeah so I mean and God God does this with us um, he lets us save face I mean we have we, ha we all have skeletons in our closet but God doesn't want to embarrass us in fact uh, point number five he you protect you protect them from the darkest secrets um, and what was the brothers darkest secrets that they'd that they'd uh, taken a Joseph's coat dipped in blood and sh shown it to their father and uh, they would have rather died than tell told their father the truth, but um, in verse nine to eleven, he tells them, you know, he tells them what to say, what to say to Ashford, what to say to his father. Um, he word for word he scripts out something that they can tell his father, so it almost gives them a cover story again. Um, he, yeah, he protects them from, he protects their secret, so they they don't have to uh, feel scared, and they don't have to live in fear. And uh, truth six is that forgiveness, so forgiveness is a life sentence. Um, this is this is big, it's something that we need to understand that, you know, if, if you forgive someone today, you need to forgive them tomorrow and you need to forgive them forever. It is, it is something that happens continuously. And um, Joseph, we see that with Joseph, like, uh, so 17 years down the line in chapter 50, um, Joseph's brothers come running to him, asking him, begging him for when Jacob dies, um, begging, begging for their lives, but um, Joseph, um, Joseph just replied saying, you know, 17 years ago I forgave you, so stop being silly, I, just, I forgive you now. And um, and I guess Joseph's secret was that he had actually forgiven them when, uh, 17 years ago when he, when he first said he did. And uh, yeah, so number seven is, you, when, so after forgiving them, you, you, you bless them, you, you, ask, you pray and ask God to bless them. And, uh, and actually truly mean it. Um, because even even in even in the, in Joseph's case, he says, you know, I have forgiven you, but and I will and I will bless you guys. Don't worry about it. I will take care of you. And so um, this leads on to our our verse of the day, which says, 
uh, in Matthew 5 verse 44, it says, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. We need to be able to pray for our enemies, the, the people that have hurt us. And um, But in order to do that, we need to be able to forgive them and love them. And actually, not just pray and say, God, I commit them to you, but actually um, ask for God to uh, bless them. And so if you were to look at Job's story, you'd, um, you'd see that his suffering doesn't actually end until he starts praying for his friends. His friends would actually become a thorn in his flesh. And so, you know, um, yeah, so when you do pray for him, just really, just really ask God to bless them and actually mean it. Um, yeah, so that's our seven principles. And, um, you know, if over this, over this video that, you know, God's brought people to your mind or the Holy Spirit's brought people to your mind that, um, that you feel like you still haven't forgiven, then I strongly urge you to um, just spend some time after this video just asking God, asking the Holy Spirit just to, uh, uh, just to, just to reveal to you what needs to be done. And, um, yeah, just take it to God because he will make things right. Um, thank you guys for listening to the video and I really hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you guys around.